So it was the Olympic time trials today, both the men's and women's, same course, lumpy, 44k with like 800 meters of climbing for the men, 22k, 500 meters of climbing, so basically the men just did two laps. Um, Strava day was basically useless, no one's uploaded who has actually got some gas, so I think what would be more interesting is looking at people's pacing strategies, um, thanks to this lad called VeloFax on Twitter has sorted me out with the good stuff. Um, but anyway, this, these are the women's results, so Van Vluten won. Maybe not a huge surprise. Marlon Marisa, she was really strong in Europeans last year, so not too un unexpected. I remember watching that race, and she was super, super strong, and also had pretty dialed kit. I remember, like, she she had it sorted out. Uh, Van der Breggen as well, rounding out the podium. And then for the men's, a bit of surprise maybe, with Ghana not there, but it was very hilly, and obviously Ghana's going for the team pursuit in the track. Uh, so he was, yeah, a little bit down, but Primoz de Moulin Dennis... Kung missed out by like 0. 0.0004 of a second or something. It was a tough one for the lad. Um, and then Van Aert, maybe a bit disappointing. Askren, good result. Uran, Remco, Bevin. Um, so yeah, not maybe an interesting podium. Anyway, we're going to go to the women's. So this is the spreadsheet here. I, I can put it in the, in the links below. But if not, it's called Velofax on Twitter if I forget. Um, and so the first time check is at like the first climb. Um, so I guess it would reward the fastest climbers, which obviously is Van Vluten, but it's also a bit technical on the downhill. Um, I guess we can see it here, but uh, always, you might as well just look at the women's because it's a bit easy to see. Because um, you can see where the time checks are, so that's where the first time check is. So it's sort of go downhill up the main climb, um, downhill, and then up here as well. This climb is actually longer, but not as steep until there's a 13% ramp at the end. Uh, anyway, so Marlon Royce are, like a lot slower on that, but then she's a slightly, I guess, maybe quicker like just better in terms of the TTing. Um, so it doesn't lose as much over the 20 minutes as she did over the 14 minutes. It was more downhill, probably got higher watts, but maybe not as high um, uh, watts per kilo, for instance. Van der Breggen as well, decent. But you can see some of the pacing strategies here, like Grace Brown went out really, really hard, only six seconds back on Van der Breggen, but then faded quite a lot. Maybe she's just a better climber and blew up. So that's the sort of interesting. Diget, maybe to be expected, lost a lot of time on the first part, but it's weird that she lost so much time on the second part, which you thought suit her. She's generally a bigger rider, um, et cetera, et cetera. But generally, in, in the women's, I didn't actually watch it because it was like 4 a.m. at British time. And I need some sleep, and I can't. I can't be keep waking up so early to watch the race. I barely caught most of the men's to be honest. I only woke up at like eight, so I caught just the last hour. Um, but yeah, in in the end, pretty convincing win for Van Bluten, and then close between everyone else. Um, so now we'll go over to the men's, um, which I think. Oh, I've also got my own spreadsheet as well, which makes it maybe a bit simpler than this because there's about a million different time splits here. So time one is taken at the first climb, then time two is taken at like a, a weird point, and then time three is like. Well, I guess we, we already showed that. Time two is like here, and then time three is obviously at the finish lap. So the main thing is to look at the lap times. And I think here, we'll go over to my little spreadsheet. It just makes it a bit easy to see. So this is lap one, this is lap two, and um, this is the difference between the laps. And what's interesting is that in the first lap, we had what? Four, five people. Okay, well, Kuvart Van Aert, six people within the top within 20 seconds of the fastest lap so 20 seconds you're like okay if you negatively split that you could bring that back and what's interesting is that no one could negatively split it no one went faster on the second lap and actually everyone went slower by a significant margin except Primoz Roglic so Roglic maybe the conditions change but I'm unconvinced because they looked pretty similar and they all did ride at slightly different times as well um like Askren finished quite a lot earlier oh, well actually Askren got caught by Roglic for instance but um, the Ghana was off a fair amount later than Roglic. Um, so anyway, that I think is the biggest thing is that people really negatively split. And if you look at Wout van Aert, he had an absolute shocker. First lap 27.40 and next lap 29.05. Now obviously there's a lot of explanations. It was actually quite hot. People predicted storms, but it was really hot and humid. And a lot of them had like long sleeve TT um, suits. Like I know, uh, what's his face? Old Remy Cavagna. He had full sleeves, and I was like, that looks so hot. France haven't had a good Olympics at all for the cyclists. Lecomte yesterday in the mountain bike, bit, bit disappointing. She was probably a favourite, um, at least for a medal. Um, and I think a lot of people can blame their heat preparation. But like, he was wearing gloves as well, and Campanats was like, gloves don't do much, but they, they keep heat in. And that's the thing. If you look at your arm, like your, your fingers, you have so many um, like blood cells so close to the surface, so it's really good for cooling. So like it's more things like this where like teams will be like, okay, well, how much does it lose? It loses a half a watt. It loses us a watt. But then how much cooler are they going to be? 
and that's the key point. And I think Roglic, to be fair, did wear gloves, but maybe he just goes really well in the heat and had adapted to it well. I'm not 100% sure. But, I mean, there's not one perfect formula. It just depends. Like a visor as well, it can be more aero, it cannot be more aero, or it can be negligible, but it doesn't cool, increase cooling. So then you've just got to test it and figure out, is heating or is going to be a real big issue? For instance, you know, if they were maybe Iran probably exceeded himself today just because he's from Colombia where it's really hot like Carapaz and he's more used to humidity so potentially on another day if it was like 15 degrees and cold um maybe he wouldn't have done as well um but then uh Askren's done well I don't think I think the heat is is an issue um for some riders maybe more than others especially often big riders for instance for Ghana again he lost he did a minute slower Dennis a minute slower Tom de Moulin a minute slower and the thing with this TT is like so on the road Everyone was like, oh, yeah, well, look at the preparation. For instance, the Tour de France, everyone everyone who did the tour basically did well. Or, sorry, everyone who finished top nine did the tour, right, apart from Yates. Or top ten, sorry, only Yates didn't. Well, this, you've got Roglic, who did the tour but then crashed out. Dumoulin, who hasn't basically raced all year. Dennis, who hasn't raced for a long time. Kung did the tour. Ghana did the tour. Wout van Aert did the tour. Um, Askren did the tour. Aram did the tour. Remco didn't. Bevan didn't. I don't know he did do the tour. Betio did, Thomas did. So like here, it's sort of hard to say exactly um, what what the best preparation is, but I think you'd probably go to say that not going to the tour was a good idea, um, at least. Um, but then I think at some point you've got people like Roglic who are just so good, he could probably do anything and still be up there. You know, he could do the tour, go to an altitude camp. Obviously, he barely raced before the tour and was still in top, top condition. So I'm not sure for the TT going to the tour was necessarily the biggest advantage because obviously you've got three weeks where you're okay you're going to ride your tt bike maybe you could do it on recovery days and you ride it on the trainer after a stage but apart from that you've got like two tt days it's not it's not huge um so you know obviously you've got dennis who's just bashing a tt day every single day let's say um which is probably an advantage but then i think at the end of the day it really does just to come down who's strongest and you can say pacing strategy this pacing strategy that but at the end of the day it doesn't matter how you pace it. If you're eight seconds back on the f- on the first lap to Roglic, like you can't pace that better. You just gotta have more gas. Like it's not like Roglic was like everyone else blew up, but no one was quicker than Roglic at the first lap. Everyone was slower than in the first and the second. So ultimately, Roglic is just a monster, and everyone else, I guess, went out hard and then just was like, "Yeah, I can't do this." Maybe they were listening to the splits in the ears too much. I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, but anyway, it's pretty interesting just to see the time gaps between people. And maybe also, like, people just gave up. Like, if you're Garrett Thomas, you're the first lap, you're a minute down, you're just like, oh, I'm not going to win a medal, am I? Like, maybe just cruise around. I'm not saying he's done that, but I could imagine, like, some people might do. Like, um, for instance, the only power data I do actually have um, was from old uh, Lawson Crabbe. And he did a really fast, like, he did, like, 3.30 for the first lap, and then after that did, like, 2.60. So maybe he just wasn't feeling it, maybe he went too hard and blew up. I'm not sure. But anyway, those, those are my thoughts from the time trial. Pretty interesting. I can probably go into some kit details, but I didn't really see anything that crazy, to be honest. The only thing I did see was Annemiek van Bloon had Velcro shoes and won the world, uh, won the Olympics. Mad. But anyway, cheers for watching. I'll see you in the next one.